HATEOS. HATEOS is an acronym for Hypermedia as the Engine of Application State. Let us look into this example where a GET request is invoked to query the account balance. The response of the REST API looks something like this. If you observe closely, ideally it should consist of this much of information only as requested by the REST API. But along with the account balance, it also consists of some REST endpoint links in the response. This is what is known as hypermedia, which is the center of discussion today. These hypermedia links are responsible for driving the application state. There are four actions which a client here a banking application can ideally take right now which are deposit into an account, withdrawal, transfer and closing the account. Let us look into another example where the same GET request is invoked to query the account balance. Here the account has insufficient funds and hence the links are placed dynamically by the server after considering the actions which can be taken forward. As funds are negative, hence the only actions which can be carried out for this user is a deposit action. He cannot withdraw, he cannot transfer and he cannot close the account because he does not have sufficient funds in his account. Hence this is how hypermedia links helps in driving the state of an application. So here hypermedia is suggesting that application can only meet a deposit request right now. Now the question is, is it required for a REST endpoint to implement HATEOS? And the answer is no. Not necessarily every REST API should implement HATEOS. It completely depends upon application architecture designs. According to Richardson model of REST API, HATEOS is a core component in determining the REST API maturity. It sits at top of the pyramid and REST API is said to be a highly mature level 3 REST API. If it implements the HATOS along with level 1 and level 2 specifications which are HTTP verbs and different URIs. I have a separate in-depth video on results and models so if interested do check it out the link is in i button. To summarize a level 3 API is basically the one which have a different URIs as per the operations, appropriate HTTP verbs like get, post, delete and put and HATOS. As you can see in this response we have a link section which is basically the hypermedia and the HATEOS implementation. Okay, let us now go ahead and see how can we implement HATEOS in a Spring REST application. Okay, so I am here at start.spring.io and here I'll add my dependency which will be needed in the project. So I'll add web dependency, then I'll add the HATEOS dependency. Make sure you select Maven or Gradle as per your need and the Java version. So I'm selecting 8, I'll generate it. Okay, so the download is complete. So actually I have already downloaded and imported in here and I have implemented couple of controller and the, basically the REST API so that in this video we can fully cover on the creation of uh, hypermedia links. So as you can see here, I have this account controller and this controller has all the APIs which we have discussed in the slides. So this is related to a banking API. So it can retrieve your account balance. It can create an account. It can deposit, withdraw and transfer the amount. So we will try to implement our HATEOS into these APIs. So for a quick walkthrough, I'll just go through each and every classes. In controller, as you can see, we have five endpoints. Error handler service to handle error. Then in model, we have account and transfer object. So we will be using response entity. Hence, we are creating this error response and success response structure. Then we have service, which is having all those uh, services. Find one will retrieve the account balance on the basis of account number deposit to account will deposit into account withdraw will withdraw and create will create an account and transfer will transfer the amount from one account to another account so these are the five services which is present in account service and so is our account services implementation so you can go through this implementation once i'll check in the code and provide the github repository link in description below okay now let me start this application once and we can quickly go through the rest endpoints okay the application has started I'll go to Postman and here I have actually created a Postman collection for those five APIs. I'll provide this as well as part of repository. And now let me get the balance. Okay, so I have randomly I have taken one, two, three, four, five as account number. If I hit invoke, it will say that account number does not exist. So let me just create one account first. So this has all this uh, request body added. I'll go ahead and create it. So it has created an account with an initial value of 2000 rupees. Now I'll go and get the balance and it will retrieve me the balance. Now let me do a deposit into this 
and as you can see after the 5000 of deposit it has increased to 27000 similarly withdraw api will work so if you withdraw an amount 3000 it will direct from the account and if you want to transfer to some other account we need to send the from account and to account so here we don't have a destination account number present so it is throwing an error saying destination account is not available please check the account number first so what i'll do i'll create one more account with let's say 5000 as balance and then i'll try to initiate a transfer request so now it has says not enough funds to carry out transactions okay because i am transferring 24001 but that fund available is 24000 okay so pretty much this is the api so what we'll do so as per hgos we have to have uh, the links also present as part of the response on the basis of what actions can be performed on that particular application okay now let's go back to ide and uh, i'll go back to controller and in here this is the api which is actually retrieving the balance of an account so what i want to do here is i want to create a link to deposit the amount to transfer the amount and to withdraw the amount on the basis of what on the basis of amount which is available in this account so if the amount is available in positive value let's say some 20,000 or 10,000 rupees, then this person will be able to transfer, deposit or withdraw the amount. But if the funds is zero, then he'll not be able to transfer or withdraw the amount. He will only be able to deposit the amount. And this way we will create the links. Okay, so first we will take this into a response entity object. Okay. So we have a response entity object. So this particular function is running a response entity of type either an error response or a successful response. So let's say if it returns a successful response, then we have to create a success object. So success response, success response equals to response entity dot get body. Okay. And we will cast it. Cool. Now we want to retrieve the account object from this success response. So I'll create an account class and account equals to success response dot get object and this object will be of type account. Okay. Now we have our account object available. Now we want to create the links. Okay. To create a link in what Spring HTOs provides us is they provide us with an entity model. So we can actually create an entity model which will be a resource on which we can build the links. So what we'll do, I'll create an entity model. So this will be of type account and I'll name it as response and this will be of entity model dot of of what type. So this should be of account type. Okay. So I have created here a resource and this resource will be containing all those links of API which we want to present as hypermedia links. I'll do resource dot add and as you can see it is prompting as links. So we can provide the list of links and we can add it into a resource. So we'll add. So what we'll have to create is we have to create a web MVC link builder link object. So I'll do web link builder dot link to and here we have a method so so which type of link we want to provide so we can actually derive the links from the method which are present into this controller so for that purpose we have to use the method on and then we have to get this class so i'll do get class and we'll do dot uh, let's say deposit okay so deposit takes into a new amount object and what we'll do, we will add as dot with relative link as the, we'll give the name of the link and that the name of the link will be deposit. Okay, so this way one of the links has been created and it is added to this resource. Now that we have actually created a deposit link to this particular API, now I'll just return this uh, resource as the response of this API. So return new response entity and this will be of type resource comma http status dot okay okay i'll restart the server okay now let me go back to api and create an account 
so this has created an account of 5000 rupees and now i'll go and hit get api so initially when we invoked earlier it was providing us a message and an account details and the status as 200 okay okay now when i invoke this it will also have a link which says that you can also do an operation which is known as deposit so as you can see deposit is coming here and the link is coming here so if you go back to application as you can see we have mentioned that with relative name as deposit so whatever link we are creating that will be named whatever name you will provide in with ariel and whatever method you will mention here those rest uri will be copied and will be pasted in the response of this particular api so this is how we can add links to an existing api so that the client who is actually invoking this api will be knowing that what sort of actions or what sort of rest api they can access right now we have added one link okay but the idea here is to add the links dynamically by dynamically what i mean is that whenever account balance is low or it is zero or it is a negative let's say for example then the user should not be allowed to transfer or withdraw any amount so the link should be dynamically changing according to the value of amount present in the account number so for that purpose what we'll do we'll create a function and we will try to create the links dynamically on the basis of amount available in the account okay so let me go ahead and create one uh, method i'll create a protected method which will return a list of string let's say and let me name it as allowed actions okay and this will take in an account object so i'll do account account okay i'll create a private not private i'll create a list of string and name it as let's say actions equals to new array list and that's it so what i want to do is on the basis of amount which is available in this particular account object we will create actions right so we will decide whether deposit is allowed whether transfer is allowed whether withdraw is allowed or not okay so i'll do if condition if account dot get amount is less than zero okay for example let's say he has uh, account uh, amount less than zero or equal to zero then what should happen he will only be allowed to deposit the amount okay so what i'll do i'll do actions dot add and deposit okay else if he has uh, more than zero value then he'll be allowed to do all the operations right so we'll do add and i'll do let's say deposit and i want to provide him the capability of all three right withdraw and transfer so i'll do transfer withdraw fine now i'll just return this return actions okay now this utility function will provide us the allowed actions on the basis of account okay now in here uh, let me just uh, get rid of this for now and what i'll do i'll create a list of uh, string and allowed actions equals to allowed actions and here we'll pass the account object which we retrieved earlier okay so this will return us a list of string which will be having the value that what all actions are applicable now on the basis of this allowed actions what i want to do is i want to create the links so allowed actions dot uh, let's say stream dot for each value in this for each action in this what i want to do is i want to create a resource okay so if the resource and the action dot uh, let's say equal ignore case and i'll put deposit okay similarly we will create uh, transfer and withdraw transfer and withdraw okay and uh, i'll add this link in all three here here and here delete this okay 
so uh, now we have uh, all the links created so i'll just make sure that it's deposit this should be a transfer method and here it should be a transfer object this should be transfer here it should be with draw api okay and this should be withdraw fine so now what we are doing here is we are checking on the basis of account value that whether deposit transfer or withdraw is allowed and on the basis of that we are adding the links to this api response i'll restart the server okay the application has started let me go back and create one account let's say with an value of 20000 rupees so i have created an account with account number 12345 okay so let me just withdraw the amount of 3000 from here so we have 17000 rupees in the balance and if i retrieve the balance it says 17000 as well as it says that you can do is deposit transfer and withdraw so the api is also providing me hypermedia links which are allowed okay so basically the client who is invoking this api to retrieve the balance of a customer is actually getting these three links in a broader view and he will be the application will be able to know okay so the next course of action can be deposit transfer or withdraw so these links are actually are capable of driving the state of an application right and now why i'm saying that is let's say i have uh, withdrawn the whole 17000 rupees okay so right now it says the amount is zero in my balance so let's say if i go and now if i invoke our uh, retrieve balance api instead of these three links it will only provide me the deposit link because my account balance is zero okay as you can see my account balance is zero and i'll not be in a position to transfer or withdraw any amount so that's why it will tell application and application will be able to know that the next course of action which is applicable for this customer is a deposit only because he cannot do transfer he cannot do a withdrawal so these links will be helpful in driving the state of an application and this is what hetio's principle is hypermedia as the engine of the application state so according to richardson maturity model if you are implementing hetio's along with uris and http verbs you are already at level 3 of an api and your api is fully matured but again it is not at all mandatory that you have to implement an hetio's in, in your restful apis so it totally depends upon the application architecture how it is structured to behave and the implementation of hetios is not at all mandatory so this was a brief overview of what hetios is and how it is important and how it can actually drive an application state and how we can implement hetios in a spring application so i have just briefly described how we can create a link but you can do much more uh, on this you can create affordance and all other stuffs but to keep this uh, session short and basic i have just created a links and uh, i have shown you what was mentioned in hetios uh, definition so this is it guys for today's session i hope you like this session and if you like this please hit like comment and subscribe and do let me know in the comment box that if i missed something and i'll be adding uh, the source code in the description below so do check it out do fork it and do clone it in your system so thank you bye bye